Hey y'all, welcome back. So glad you're here. So we're gonna be reading from our little book, Hold Me Up a Little Longer, Lord, by Marjorie Holmes. And the title is This House to Keep. It's on page 112 and 113 for me. And uh, I'll give you just a second to find it. But the title is This House to Keep. I hope y'all are having a great week. It's been, since the holiday was Tuesday, this week has just kind of flown by. And I can't believe we're already on Friday. It's just mind-blowing. <laughs> but that's okay. It happens like that, right? So I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. I hope you get to do everything you want to do, whatever that may be. So I don't know what we're going to do. We'll just have to see. All right, so let's just see how the Lord is going to minister to us with this reading today. This house to keep. Sometimes my home just seems so cozy, God. For no special reason, it suddenly seems warm and dear as if it, as if it had put sheltering arms around me. I feel snug, protected like a mole deep in its burrow or a bird in its nest. This kitchen with its clutter, this bedroom with its tumbled beds, the family room deserted now but warm with the memories of last night's music, last night's fire. I feel shielded by the wall, these walls and yet in charge. So joyfully in charge. They are mine to do with what I please. I want to spread my wings to draw them a little closer to my heart. Deep instincts stir, half buried, Buried recollections. Lord, I'm having trouble talking. I'm so sorry, y'all. Of childhood playhouses of the past, in a garage, under the attic eaves, or down the ravine with tall ferns for curtains and fallen logs and rocks for furnishings. How snug and secret it felt, yet how free, especially when rain drops spattered overhead. You know, Lord, how often I hate this house. Mourn its defects, deplore its confusions, want to flee its confining walls. Yet on some days, love rises up to compensate, like the guilty, almost overpowering love I feel when I've been cross or unfair to the children. I want to hug it as I do them, to wash its face and straighten its clothes, tuck it in, to make it as clean and sweet and charming as I possibly can. Because it's a part of my life, even as they are. It echoes my taste, reflects my character, and for all of its imperfections, it is warm and dear to me. Thank you, Lord, that I have this house to keep. Hmm. Leave it to Marjorie Holmes to give us another way of looking at our house. And I understand what she's saying. There are some times that I would just sit back and just look at my house and being that it's on YouTube, I know my house and my style and my decor is not everybody's taste. And I understand that. And that is perfectly fine. Um, and you've got people that will let you know that it is not their style and that you have too much stuff and you look like a hoarder and they don't like your decor and you've got, you know, whatever that they don't like. <laughs> And I just laugh because, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. And some days I will sit there and look at my house and think, oh my gosh, I have too much stuff. <laughs> and then yet I'll go to the thrift store, right? <laughs> but then there's some days that I'll just sit there on that couch and I'll just look around and I will just thank God that I am living in the middle of an answered prayer. Now, our other little house James and I had when we first got married, the little cottage in George County, um, was truly an answered prayer. Um, we lived there for many years. It was very small. It was one bathroom, which would not have been a big deal for just James and myself, but we was in that phase of our life where Delana was living at home going to nursing school. Um, James was still getting the twins. They were much younger and he was getting those every other weekends and for holidays and stuff. And that little bitty tiny house would close in on us when you have five people there, one bathroom, it was crazy. 
And then you add in the fact of the holidays when you have the other kids to come in and visit and eat and just hang out and have Christmases and Thanksgivings and stuff. That little house was busting at the seams. But let me just tell you what. Every time I would drive and pull into the driveway, I would thank God because I was literally pulling into an answered prayer because we needed a place to live. And he blessed us with that little house. And there was a lot of times when I lived in it that I was I would sit there and I'd just be like, I would find, see all the flaws and everything I didn't like about it. It didn't have central heat and cooling. It had window units for heating and cooling. You know, it only had the one bathroom. And, you know, I didn't like the kitchen floors and I didn't like the kitchen cabinets and it was too small. We needed to do this. You know, I could just see all that. But then there were other times I would sit there and I would just thank God that we were cool in the summer. We were warm in the winter. That little house encased so much love so many good times were had there. And at the time that the Lord blessed us with that house, we were in desperate need of it. And he blessed us with it. And it was perfect at the time. We could afford it. We managed to do some things to it. You know, we built on another bedroom. We had the outside painted and redone. And you know, it was, there was just so many different things that we did to it. We remodeled the bathroom. And it was a true answer to prayer. And all along when we were living there, James and I would come down to Ocean Springs, maybe on the weekend, and we would ride around in our goal, our dream, for whatever reason, I don't know why we chose Ocean Springs, but we wanted to live in Ocean Springs. But at that time in our life, it was just not possible. There was just, it just, there was no way we could not financially afford it. We were not in a position. We just, it just wasn't working. Okay. It just was not the right time. But I knew that one day, hopefully we would get to live in Ocean Springs where we had always wanted to live. And then when, you know, the day came and after looking at many, many houses, and I'd even seen this particular house on, I think it was on Zillow or something. And I was looking through it, looking at the pictures and stuff. And the online photos, they were not even fancy. But I just remember looking at the house thinking, there's just no way we can afford that. There's just no way. And y'all, this house is not a huge house. It's not a fancy house. It's not in a ritzy part of town. Um, so there's really nothing like quote unquote special about it. But... I loved it, and I finally got the realtors. I was like, I wanna go look at this house. And the minute I pulled up in the driveway, I was early, I was waiting on them to get here. And as soon as they got here and they got out of their cars, I said, this is a house. This is it. I just knew it when I pulled in the driveway. And um, the rest is history, as they say, here we are. And we went through a lot a lot to get to this point and I think we have literally touched every room in this house and made it our own and we love it we love everything about it um and it's just a true answer to a prayer it was a prayer that we had prayed for years to get to where we were at to where we're at now and it's the perfect size for James and myself when it's just us and yet there's still enough room. It could stand to be a little bit bigger when all the kids are here because we've got some big old boys in this family. <laughs> but it's perfect for us. And I thank God for that. And I don't care what anybody thinks about it as far as it's not their style, I have too much stuff, whatever. Okay, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But to us, it's home. And I thank God for it because he didn't have to bless us with this house. And I remember, I, I remember saying it on one of the devotions, I don't know if it was here or the other channel, but I remember saying whenever I was praying for this house, I would put, I would tell the Lord exactly what I wanted, exactly what I wanted. You know, I wanted central heat and cooling. I wanted it to be on a slab. I wanted a brick home. You know, I wanted uh, three bedrooms at least. I wanted two bathrooms, you know, I wanted, I just had my little things that I was 
what I was praying for. I was just laying it out, what I was asking for and what I wanted. And he went so far and above that. He went beyond. He even threw, I loved this brick on this house. In fact, it looks like a house I used to live in that I absolutely loved. That was my favorite house I ever lived in. I loved the brick. I loved the layout. I loved everything about that house. In fact, I often said if I could build a house, I would build that house. Well, y'all, God gave me that exact same house. It's just the floor plan is literally flipped. And it's about a thousand square feet smaller. But other than that, it's the exact same house. Down to the brick. Tell me God don't listen to us. Tell me God does not pay attention to the details. Tell me God does not give us the desires of our hearts. Yes, he does. And when I pull into that driveway, I'm living in the middle of an answered prayer. I'm living in so many answered prayers because he did it. He didn't have to. He didn't have to give me the floor plan that I wanted. He didn't have to let it be the brick that I loved. He didn't have to do any of that, but he did because he is a God who cares about us. And if it matters to us, it matters to him. Don't stop praying. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop believing because in God's time, and in his way, he will answer your prayers. I cannot tell you how many times James and I would come down here and ride around and look. And just, we would sit at restaurants and just talk about it and dream and just want it so bad. Years, y'all, years. But you know what? While we were praying and dreaming we were still blessed and again, living in the middle of an answer prayer. And I realized when I would be complaining to myself about our other little house, the Lord would quicken my spirit and remind me, do you know how many people don't have a home? Do you know how many people would, would love to have the very thing that you're complaining about? Just like he did me about my yard. He got on to me about my yard when I was complaining a couple years ago about my yard, he quickened my spirit and said, do you know how many people don't even have a backyard? Do you know how many people would love a backyard like you have? And yet here you have it and all you're doing is complaining. And that got to me and I repented and I started thanking God for that little house. And then he blessed us with this, thanking God for my yard. And then he's blessed me to be able to work on the yard, have the strength, the ability, and put so many clearance plants in my path. Either clearance plants are free. Landscaping timbers, free. I mean, God did it. But it's because I changed my attitude. And I quit complaining. And I started having a thankful spirit and a, a thankful attitude and a spirit of gratitude because God didn't have to do any of this. Just like we discussed yesterday, he didn't have to give us a world of color that he give us. He did not have to do any of that, but that's how much he loves us. He cares about us and he knows what we want, whether we speak it or not. He knows the desires of our hearts. And if we will be patient, if we will be faithful in our prayer life, if we will be thankful for where we're at and what we've got at the moment, in his time and in his way and in his will, he will give us the desires of our heart. But we have to have a thankful attitude and a, a spirit of gratitude. And y'all, once I started changing my mindset, I could literally start seeing how God was changing things for me. And it was merely because I stopped complaining and I started being grateful. I mean, who would you rather help out? Somebody that complains all the time or somebody who's so grateful for any and everything that you do for them? It's really simple. It's really simple when you break it down. And I'm so thankful. Um, there are people out there who have grander homes than we do in grander neighborhoods and that's wonderful. I don't begrudge anybody anything. 
I'm thankful for where I am and for what I have. And I'm living in the middle of an answer prayer all the way around. The other day, James and I, something happened in our life and I, we were just reflecting on, do you realize that we're living in the middle of answered prayers? Everywhere I would look around, I was surrounded by answered prayers. And when you start looking through eyes of thankfulness and gratefulness, you will start to see just how much God has truly done for you. It's so easy for us to overlook what he's done for us when everything's going okay and those things that you prayed for you're now living in the middle of you tend to the humanness the human nature of us tend to kind of forget when it wasn't like that and I don't want to forget I want to remember and I want to be able to thank God because I remember where we was and where we're at now thank you God Wow. Thank you, Marjorie Holmes, for bringing it back to me. If you don't, if this hasn't touched anybody else, it has blessed me and reminded me. I'm in the middle of an answer prayer, y'all. I'm sitting here in this house. Y'all just hear the central air kick on in the middle of an answer prayer. I'm so blessed. And that man that's going to come on this afternoon to me, it's another answer prayer. And I don't ever, ever want to take anything the Lord has blessed me with for granted. Because he's so good, y'all. He's so good and I love him so much. And is our life perfect? Absolutely not. We're human. We make mistakes. Things happen. You know, every day is not a perfect day. But... There is something to be thankful for, for in every day. We can look and thank God for something. Even if your day is going to pot, there's something you can find about that day to thank God for. The mere fact that you woke up, there you go. And when you start changing and rewiring the way your brain wants to work, and you start focusing on the positive, you're going to see more positive in your life. How do I know? Trust me. I've learned this. And I'm still learning it. I'm still learning it. There are days that I will be like negative, And then I'm like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No. You may be feeling that way. Okay. But how much more do you have to be thankful for? How much more positive is going on versus the negative? And I just start focusing on the positive. And then the Lord just starts changing my attitude. And before I know it, I forget I was negative. <laughs> He's so good, y'all. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this has blessed you as much as it's blessed me. Just sitting here reliving and talking about where we've come from. How far we've come. You know, once we start doing that and we can start seeing God's hand in our life, whoo, before you know it, you'll be having a prayer meeting all by yourself. He's so good, y'all. I love you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.